we need to find the derivative of this function. And you'll notice that this function has some function of x raised to the power of some other function of x. Whenever this is the case, we can use a trick. Whenever we're differentiating g of x to the power of h of x, we can start by rewriting this g of x as e to the power natural log of g of x. We need to recall that this exponential function and this logarithmic function cancel each other out because they're inverses of each other. So technically, this is the same thing as this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use our exponent rules to say that we have an exponent here raised to another exponent. Whenever that's the case, we can multiply our exponents. So we can rewrite this again in this way. Now, this always seems so abstract in this form, so let's work this problem using this technique. We're going to rewrite x to the power of the square root of x as e to to the natural log of x to the power square root of x. Notice that what we did there is we just rewrote this x as e to the power natural log of x. Now what we can do is use the rules for exponents. We have an exponent on another exponent, meaning we can multiply those two exponents. And now we've rewritten our original h of x just using algebra in this new form here. And the idea here is that we know how to differentiate this form of the function. The derivative of an exponential function is just itself. But notice that this was a composite function. So the chain rule says that we have to multiply that result by the derivative of that exponent. Now it seems like we're going to use all of our differentiation skills in this problem because this here is a product of two functions, meaning we need to use the product rule to find this derivative. So I'll copy down this exponential term. And now the product rule says that we're going to copy this first term down and take the derivative of the second term. We're going to add that we're going to take the derivative of the first term and multiply that by the second term. Now I think we should be okay finding all these derivatives, but we do have to remember that the square root of x can be rewritten as x to the 1 half power. Now the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. The derivative of the square root of x we have to think of as x to the 1 half power. Then that derivative is 1 half x to the negative 1 half times the natural log of x. I'm just going to do one step of simplification inside of these parentheses. With this term here, remember again that the square root of x is x to the 1 half. If we're dividing that by x, we can take that power on x of 1 half and subtract that power on x of 1. And this whole term just turns into x to the negative 1 half power. And recall that x to the negative 1 half power is the same thing as 1 over the square root of x. Okay, maybe that looks a little bit better. The reason I rewrote it in that way is because this problem is asking us to plug in an a value of 16. In other words, they want us to evaluate this derivative at x equals 16. So we want h prime of 16. So I'll just go ahead and replace all of our x's with 16s. And let's simplify this a step. We know that the square root of 16 is 4. That turns this 1 over 2 square root of 16 into a 1 8th. And I think that that answer is a pretty good one. If you wanted to, for fun, we could factor a 1 8th out of these parentheses. That would get rid of the fractions. That would leave us with the 2 from this term and just the natural log of 16 from this term. You can verify that that's true by imagining what would happen if you multiplied this 1 8th back through the parentheses. 1 8th times 2 would give you this 1 4th. And this 1 8th times this natural log of 16 would give you this term up here. So this is another way that you can write it. You can decide which one you like better. I'll zoom out a little bit. So so you can see all of the work that we did. Take a look at it for a minute. Feel free to hit pause in your video, rewind and go back. This is a pretty complicated problem, so it might take a couple watchings in order for it all to make sense. But okay, I'll see you in the next calculus problem of the day.